Awesome, thank you. So I'm just going to take this seat right here, if you don't mind. I'm going to put my stuff on it. I need props. All right. So we've got a lot to talk about today. My name is Michael Wilkinson. I'm the founder of Protecting Your Poverty. I own a company called MyNetSum. MyNetSum helps people all over the nation with their finances in a pretty unconventional way. So if I sound a little different, if I talk a little bit different, if I get a little bit crazy, it's all part of what I do. Because to be honest, I get mad when I talk about finances, as I'm sure some of you do. I get sad when I talk about finances, as I'm sure some of you do. And at times, I felt a little hopeless about finances, like I know everybody that has crossed my path, whether they're homeless or worth $20 million, feels. And I know that a lot of people in here are just like, man, who's this guy? Uh, last year, I showed up in all my homeless gear uh, because I used to be homeless for two years. Uh, I was an orphan. So before I dive into what I do and how the information I give you tonight changes your life tonight, as so many people keep telling you about, and I can tell you right now, I can't imagine some of the conversation that went on between spouses to get them to a financial seminar on a Tuesday night. So thank you for doing that. Give a round of applause for everybody this okay. uh, Finances isn't, isn't easy to talk about. As a matter of fact, a national poll came out and said people would rather talk about sex than money. And it's true. People would rather talk about sex and money. Okay? Why? Because money's embarrassing. And I gotta tell you that you've really been fed a whole bunch of lies. I was in human trafficking for three years. I was given up for adoption because of money. My mom rode with the Hells Angels, her sister rode with the Banditos, and I was the punching bag in between. So before they killed me, she gave me up to adoption, and I was really put into a foster system that was nothing more than a human trafficking ring. I went through 36 different foster homes. I won't get in to the details of what goes on in those foster homes, but many of you can guess, okay? And I was saved by a Brigadier General who changed my name from, or my birth certificate from Native American uh, to Caucasian, because it's illegal for a white person to adopt a Native American. So when I was on my deathbed, he got the call from the state, and he made the decision to use his contacts in the military to get my birth certificate changed. I've actually got two of them. Saved my life, I was on my deathbed when he saved me. I was in the hospital and they didn't think I was gonna make it. So when you talk to me about money, it's a little bit different. I don't really care about money and that's why people are willing to give it to me. I'm not going to make money off of your investments. I'm not gonna tell you how to invest your money. I don't want that responsibility. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna be your attack dog. I'm gonna tell you what everybody's been doing to you. Why? Because they did it to me. They did it to me when I was homeless and took advantage of me. They did it to me when I was a teen parent, raising a child at 19 years old, kids raising kids, everybody can relate to that in some way, shape, or form, okay? They took advantage of me when I got a divorce. Oh boy, did the attorneys take advantage of me when I got a divorce, right? Nobody can relate to that, right? <laughs> they took advantage of me when my boys died. That's right. So the wolves came because they knew how to job. The medical collections came, $80,000, you bear the boys, we don't care, okay? The credit scores dropped. I went to Lexington Law, paid them for eight months, $2,000. What a waste of money. They're a billing service, and we'll go over that. Then I went to Dead America, and what did they do for me? Well, I didn't know that all their fees were front-loaded, so Dead America does their job. Lexington Law does their job. Problem is, I didn't read what their job was and I call that protecting your poverty. <clears throat> protecting your poverty is an idea. Protecting your poverty is you. Protecting your poverty is you being mad at a system that doesn't work, which is what I call the millennials. Protecting your poverty is being a baby boomer, which is baby boom with the credit cards, right? That's really what did it, you boomed with the credit cards. <sighs> Whole world blew up, Visa, MasterCard, thank you. Right? Entering the Dave Ramsey decade. I've gotten into it with Dave Ramsey. Oh yes, don't get me started on Dave Ramsey, okay? We will touch base on Dave Ramsey. There are some good things there, but anybody who tells you that you don't need credit lines and to have no credit score, I gotta be honest with you, should not only not be able to give that advice, I really do think he should be in jail. And I've said that to the Zigglers, which are the people who employ his seminars, and I've said that to him, because I've seen what it does to you. I have people in this room right now that are in the Dave Ramsey decade. People who paid off all their bills, sold everything they owned, tried to live without credit, and it worked for two or three years. 
until there was a medical emergency, until there was a job change, our change, until you couldn't access credit that you needed to prolong your hardship. And last time I checked, that credit is pretty important. And it's not Dave Ramsey's fault, it's not my fault, it's not your brother's or sister's fault that somebody didn't teach you how to use that credit right. It's your own fault. And that's what we call protecting your poverty. It's because protecting your poverty is not asking <coughs> questions when you should. It's taking authoritative figures and just paying the money. And because we paid the money, we're supposed to believe what they said, like accountants and attorneys. Well, did you know that you hired a real estate attorney who pretends to be a divorce attorney for extra money on the side and really knows nothing about divorce? I know that because it happened to me. It wasn't her fault. She was trying to feed her family. I was protecting my poverty. So when I come to you about money issues, when I come to you with how to make money, I know how to make money and I didn't know how to keep it. So what did I do? I surrounded myself with financial advisors like Daniel, my buddy Sean. I surrounded myself with people that knew that financial language in a way that I didn't. I learned the credit repair laws. I learned the debt consolidation laws. I built companies. I made millions on these laws. Why? All because I read the book. All because I read the Affordable Health Care Act before it ever came out. On my radio show, Money Belt Radio, I have about 100,000 listeners right now. It's just small. We're still growing. We're still young. We only play once a week. But we predicted what was going to happen with the Affordable Health Care Act, and people thought we were nuts. Accountants knew what we were talking about. Accountants knew what a tax meant versus health care. Anybody in here see the movie Repo Men? Mm -hmm. Kind of a disgusting movie, right? It's going to happen. Why? Well, health care is a tax. So when you go in and you're 78 years old and you need a heart transplant and you can't get one and the government decides you're too old to have a heart transplant and they're not going to pay for it, guess what they're going to do? Got any family or friend members that can co-sign for you? We'll get you a new heart. It's already happening. It's happening right now. And people don't understand what's going on because we have people up there getting in front of us saying they're gonna, they're gonna fix these things, they're gonna fix these things, right? And they're just lying to us the same way they lied to me. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on people trying to protect us. And it reminds me of a story that Zig Ziglar used to, used to talk about. It was about, as old fashioned, so ladies, please don't get mad at me. But an oil, oil-filled tycoon decided to marry off his daughter. So he invited all the eligible bachelors to his house, and he was going through this big old party, elegant party. And towards the end of the party, everybody went back to the pool. And the host of the party got up and said, Now, as, you, as all of you know, my daughter is the sole heir to my oil empire. That swimming pool right back there is full of alligators, water moccasins, and piranhas. The first person to jump in that pool and swim to the other side will have their choice of marrying my daughter and getting my entire empire, or I will give them a million dollars cash right there for doing it. Sure enough, there was a splash. And just as quickly as the guy went in, he was out, he was battered, he was broken, he had bite marks all over him. He comes running up to the oil tycoon, and the oil tycoon says, congratulations, son. Which one do you want? Do you want the million dollars or do you want the hand to my daughter and do you want to inherit my entire oil field inheritance? And the guy was breathing, just like, you know, I don't want any of that. I want to know the name of the man who pushed me in that pool. <laughs> Millennials? <laughs> Millennials. Do you feel like you were sold on a corporate job for 30 years? Do you feel like you were sold on student debt for a doctor's license, attorney's license, or accountant's license just to find out that you've got to wait till you're 50 to make any money? Does any of this ring a bell with anybody? Does it ring a bell that none of this stuff is taught in any school, any college, anywhere, and nobody's asking any questions? Does anybody think to realize and of course, because this was a book written in the 1800s that Abraham Lincoln in the 1800s predicted what's happened with the World Bank system. <coughs> Abraham Lincoln was the guy who brought the World Bank system. <coughs> Civil War. It makes us make bad decisions 
Are we faced with bad decisions in our money every day? Do I big size? Why not? Big decisions, right? What about decisions? Do I give up to a doc? Do I give up to a board? Uh, I'm stressed out, so I decide to drink and hit on my wife. Uh, I'm stressed out about money, so we're going to divorce and tear everything apart for a better greener grass. I need to make more money, so I'm going to quit the job where I've been loyal for 10 years just because I went out and bought a car with a $1,200 a month payment. I've overextended myself. These are things that everybody sees, but nobody knows how to fix, right? I know how to fix them because I've had to. I didn't have any help. I got no family. My last seminar showed up, like I said, homeless because I was on the streets for two years. I chose to be. I had a job. I made money. I could buy my own stuff. I put myself through high school as far as I could. I had my French teacher who would let me in and let me take showers so I didn't stink. I mean, it was a real life. And I wanted to show up and dress that way for a specific reason. It's because if I can go from nothing to something, I don't have any family that will <coughs> borrow against their 401k to get me out of my tax debt. I don't have a family to co-sign for me and give me an authorized user. I had to learn. And so what I decided to do is get angry and show you guys what I've learned. And this information is so powerful that you can use it right now. You can use it to, to stop co-signing for kids or family members. You can use it to build their credit score in 30 days without hiring a credit restoration company. You can use it to save thousands on your mortgage like Beanie in the back in her free consultation that I gave. I always say this with a free because I guarantee you the first one is the only one that is free because I saved her $120,000 in one consultation. It took 10 minutes. I can look at your credit score which is the best kept secret in the nation. You've been focused on the stock market and it's your credit score that's been controlling your life. It's your credit score that decides your utility setup. Do you have to put a deposit? Cell phone, do you have to put a deposit? I'm sorry, you've got bad credit. Please put $500 down. Why do I get 500 bucks? Well, we gotta take it away from our mortgage. Well, we gotta have phones, otherwise it can't work. Sound familiar? It does. Or what about I used to have good credit, but I co-signed for my kid, and, and they won't answer my phone calls, and they won't return my texts, and now it's late, and I can't make the payment, and now my credit's shot. Or real estate. I just had 18 foreclosures on my credit, and I saw my real estate empire in Phoenix go from millions and millions to, uh-oh, right? Happens. People overextended themselves. He should have attached it to his business. It was one solution. Build a business credit profile. Attach two or three credit cards to your EIN number. It takes 30 days. You have a 700 score. Walk into the bank with a smile on your face. Here's my EIN. Here's my EIN. I'm a 700 score. Write the loan. Walk in there without that. Well, you need two years bank returns and you don't make enough profit because you're writing it off all on taxes and there's nothing we can really do for you for another two years. Come back later. Meanwhile, I take that client, sit down and say, why don't we just get $80,000 worth of credit cards at 0% for 24 months? You make the income. You don't have the debt. You're paying your bills on time like everybody else. You're going to take $80,000 out of 4%. Why wouldn't you take... $80,000 out of 0% and get rewards. You have $50,000 rewards for signing up for one of those. That's a free ticket to anywhere in the United States pretty much. You can go to Disneyland and then pay your bills for 90 days to 120 days on that credit card. Pay that credit card off every month on a triple rewards credit card. You got your hotel paid for. So there's your free vacation tonight. Get a credit card with lots of reward points. Charge it up for three or four months with all your bills, nothing but your bills. Don't go to Outback. Don't go to Phoenix or Vegas. None of that stuff. Nowhere warm. Stay cold for a while, okay? <laughs> and build that up and plan for it. And as soon as you know it takes me 80,000 points to take a free vacation, who's planning a free vacation as soon as they know it's 80,000 points? <laughs> Rental car, hotel, airfare. All you got to do is pay for fun, people. I, I can't help you with the hard ones. This is an easy one. It's free. And what I'm going to tell you is if you're over a 740 credit score right now, it's free for you right now. All you have to do is know what credit card to pay for. What credit card is that? Well, right now, it changes every week. 
It's a Bank of America rewards credit card, and it's a Chase rewards credit card. And a lot of the time, American Express will surprise us and come out with something really, really cool, but it's usually those three in City Financial that have the best rollovers. So I'm gonna put some things on the board here. I'm gonna speak a little bit different language. It's, it's one that everybody in here is going to like, because when I speak to Daniel, I'm sorry, Daniel, I don't know what acronyms mean, because acronyms didn't pay my bills, right? Did any acronym pay any of your bills but Daniel? Acronyms pay his bills. You've got to pay attention, otherwise they'll take that license away. Why is that acronym important? Because his fees are cheaper than most people in the city. How do I know that? I've checked on it. So if you're in here and I can't teach you anything, here's one question I've got for you before I get started. What is your financial advisor charging you? What does that mean? He said he didn't charge me anything. Oh, yeah, he does. He takes it right out of the retirement. And I had somebody in Pennsylvania who was a professor who called me out on that. I said, Mike, you're not qualified. You didn't graduate high. You can't be giving people this advice. That's what he told me. Okay. I just asked him that question. I didn't have to know anything else other than he had judged me. So I was just going to throw a simple question back. And I said, what's your financial advisor charging you? Well, no. Do you have your statement? Well, of course I've got my statement. Pull it out. What's the percentage rate on it? Right. Oh, there isn't one. Oh, so there isn't an interest rate. So what's his fee? Well, well, his fee was, was around $18,000 for the year, and he made me this much. It's a great. 4.75% is what he was charging me. Who in here knows what that means? It means you're walking funny, and you don't know it. That's what it means. Okay, I'm not very politically correct, in case you can tell. You're walking very funny, because it cost him $400,000 the prior 15 years that he'd been working for a university and collecting that money. It was going to cost him an additional $400,000. Why? Because I know financial models like Daniel's only charge about 1.8%. 1.8% 1 from 4.8%. 3% inflation. He was getting ripped off. He didn't even know. He hired me without a high school diploma. Right? So you don't know what you don't know even if it comes to acronyms. So I'm going to show you some things. And these are things that you can use right now. And it's all based off numbers that are easy to understand. And we call this the credit ladder. Credit ladder is very simple. It starts with where the government will actually will loan you money, which is 740 and over. Guess what? If you do not use Experian, and if you're not over a 740 at Experian, you shouldn't apply to bank. In other words, if you're with US Navy Federal Credit Union, their main ba bank is Experian. So if you're actually below a 720, I'm going to give them 20 points room here, you should not apply. You're going to get turned down, or you're going to have a higher interest rate than you should. Don't believe me? Check my math. Okay? Equifax. You want to be a 660 to a 740. Who uses Equifax? Chase uses Equifax. Discover uses Equifax. So what do I want to do when I want to build somebody's credit? It's very simple. I see a 660, they don't have Discover card, it was 100 points in 30 days if they get a $10,000 limit or more. Just gave you a 760, if you're a 660 right now. All you gotta do is apply for a Discover card, you don't even have to use it. I bet Dave Ramsey didn't tell you that. 100 points to your credit score. You would have to spend almost $800 to $2,000 with a credit restoration company to do what I just told you for free. Okay? Now let's say, Mike, I've already got a Discover card. Well, did you know that you could build somebody else's credit with that Discover card? This is simple. Most people know this one, authorized user. You have something co-signed in your name and you don't want it in your name anymore? Put your kid's name on the credit card. Mike, I'm not giving my kid my credit card. Are you crazy? You don't have to give them your credit card. Just give them the credit. So if you've had that visa for 20 years, they now have 20 years history on their credit report. I've seen credit scores go up 200 points with that right there. It's free. Credit restoration guy isn't going to tell you that. Debt guy isn't going to tell you that. And I'm going to show you how to do a very cool trick with debt when you do do that. It's very fun. Get you out of debt. Okay? 640 to 570. This is all TransUnion. Okay? I refer to Experian as the cool kids. Why? They're the cheapest interest rate. You are an interest rate. I don't care what you think about yourself. The United States government has you under the USDA statistics. I don't need to tell you what the USDA is, people. We're cattle. Okay? Our statistics are found in all the USDA. 
So what I know for, for certain is if I want the best interest rates, I want to go to experience. So right now, if you have a car that is below or, oh, I'm sorry, over a 3% interest rate, you need to go home and check your interest rate because if you're a 740 or over, you need to go to a bank and you need to refinance immediately. It's hundreds of dollars. It's thousands of dollars. I just did one yesterday for a client over the phone. Saved him $5,000 in finance charges and $250 a month just by telling them to go across the street. Right? That's not difficult for anybody to understand. Why? Because they were already a 740 and when they bought their car, they were a 660. They didn't know they could refinance just like a house. All you had to do was do that. Mike, I've already got a 2.1% interest rate. I had this conversation today. I love these conversations because you're still paying an interest rate so I can still win. If your number is not zero, I win. Why? Because I know if you're a 740, I can usually get you approved for high limit credit cards and I'll roll over your car on one. I do that on a weekly, sometimes a daily basis, rolling over your cars on credit. Why would I do that? Well, first of all, you get the reward points if you open up a brand new credit card, so you're going to get a free vacation. Okay, the second thing is, is your payment goes down because now you're on a credit card amortization and not an installment loan amortization. Next thing is, is you go from 2% to 0% for 24 to 26 months on a city card, which is a rollover balance transfer credit card. And by the way, as you make those payment back, you can get reward points for that. Oh, and I forgot, the repo man can't come and knock him down your door if you lose your job because they had to give you the title to your vehicle because you just paid it off. So even if you can't, pay your bills because you can't find another job, which is happening in my hometown in the oil field. We've lost over 3,000 jobs in a town of 40,000 people in the oil field. It's a massacre. We're talking people who make $100,000 to $400,000 a year gone forever. That income will never be in that community again. You think it hurts? Yeah, what would happen if the military left Colorado Springs? That's the equivalent of the oil field leaving Farmington in Mexico. So what did I do? I took a guy who was a boiler maker, and they're some of the most elect electronically savvy people in the world. And he comes to me and says, Mike, I'm a 750 score. He says, you can't do anything. I said, okay. He says, I've been here 11 years and they're not gonna fire me. I said, okay. And I said, well, we're gonna go ahead and do some of these things anyways, because it makes sense. And we transferred his cars over to his credit cards. Uh, and I started building out about $40,000 worth of credit cards that he was never planning on using. It took him to an 800 score, and he sits in front of my office and says, I just lost my job. They gave me two weeks notice. So you still have a job? Yes, I did for two weeks. What's your severance? <coughs> How much do you have in savings? So he added it all up and he had $11,000 to his name and he's used to making, I don't know, about eight to $12,000 a month. So I wonder how that's gonna work out for him in the long run. So I set him up with all these emergency lines of credit and I just said, okay, let's go credit card happy. Boom, 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 boom. We set him up a timeline. And we turned $11,000 into $140,000 of available credit. We redlined him at 14 months, which means in 14 months, if he doesn't find a job, he's filing for bankruptcy. But he was filing for bankruptcy in four months without that plan. Nobody wants to think about that. So when we talk about the offense and defense of finances, that's what we're talking about with credit scores is I want you to refinance everything till zero. I want you to protect your assets because you don't know what's going to happen in the stock market. And I could take any bookkeeper or accountant with the best numbers in the world and they'll tell you that even their numbers don't match up at the end of the year. So it's up to you. And if you're below a 640, TransUnion is your bank. They'll prove down to a 570. So there's two questions you've got to ask every bank. Throw out all the payments, throw out everything else. What credit bureau do you use? That is the first question that you have to ask. And if they can't answer, you don't apply, period. What if you're a 660 and they, they, they approve at a 740? You could have gotten a 4% if you would have gone to an Equifax bank, and instead you're gonna get a different percentage rate up here. You're gonna get six because you're on the tail end. This is basic finance. I can put a point spread on you. I'm gonna show you what the car business does to you here in a second. It's gonna blow your mind. But this is important because of medical bills. Credit scores are important because the number one reason for bankruptcy in America, anybody know it? Who knows what one medical collection does to your credit score? Points. Who can tell me how many points you lose? Take a guess. 
you can lose up to 150 for one, one collection. You can have one 30-day late payment on your credit report is 120 points. It takes you eight months to recover from that. To get your points back, you may never get them all back. Okay? Medical bills is important to this. You know, uh, somebody shared with me that, that, that this town was kind of rocked by a couple suicides in the high schools that come. This is all about protecting your poverty. I had saved my sister from suicide three times by the time I was 10. I had sewed up her wrists. I had punched a pen straight into her heart to get her breathing again. I had given her CPR to bring her back to her life. And by the time I was 12, 13 years old, I had written her will saying, you know what, if you're going to do it, just give me your stuff so I have something to remember you by. I can't tell you how many medical bills came. I can't tell you what my parents went through. And I can't tell you how sick and tired I am of people saying, we need to be silent. We need a moment of silence. Yes, we need to respect the dead. I get that. I've got lots of dead people. I've got to respect them, so do you. But we need to do the opposite. We need to speak. We need to talk about what medical programs our kids were on, what medical programs we were on, what happened to our finances, what happened to our neighbors' finances. Why? Because we're keeping everything a secret. I just told you I was homeless without a high school diploma, and I built successful companies. What, what are you waiting for? Okay. What are you stopping yourself from doing? And it's all inside of your credit score. So when you're dealing with medical bills, you have to know something about FICO 9. When you're dealing with family members that have mental diseases, when you're dealing with family members that have physical diseases. My sister died of diabetes at 28 with ketoacidosis after all the suicide attempts. I watched her die slowly. I watched her feet go, I watched her hearing go, I watched her eyes go, I watched it all. I watched the medical bills come in, I watched my parents fight, I watched them almost get a divorce, I watched it all. And I was a product of it. I, I repeated the cycle. Medical bills. If you have medical bills, I'm going to start with that. If you have people that are worried about long-term illnesses, if you have people that are worried about current disabilities with the military, my dad was a retired brigadier general, Two artificial knees. He received some of the first artificial knees ever invented. And that's how old he goes back. He's going to be mad at me for dating him. There's a lot that comes with that. He had the VA. Not everybody in here has the VA. And what I know is that a 640 credit score, you can do two things. You can walk into a TransUnion bank and you can get a five to $7,000 debt payoff loan. That debt payoff loan, they will negotiate the debt. Some credit unions work well, and they'll pay off all of your medical debts for you. Who's in the mortgage industry? Who can tell me what that would do for your credit versus you trying to come up with the money over years? Huge. Huge. This can be done if you're a 570 in a TransUnion bank who cares about you. I do probably 10 of these loans a week at Southwest Federal Credit Union and Eagle Credit Union in Farmington, New Mexico, where I come from. It's just clockwork. I see it, 570, go. It's done. Okay? That's also important because it takes you from a 570 to a 640. Why is that important? Because I know Capital One really, really, really likes 640s. So if you're a 640 and you don't have a Capital One card, maybe you should apply for one tonight. Why? Because that 640 is going to take you up to a 660. Right? You don't even have to charge anything. It just has to show up on your credit. It just took you to a 660. So then what am I having to do? What did I tell you was at a 660? Discover. I just said you should go after Discover at a 660. I'm not talking about any of the bad stuff on your credit, right? I'm just talking about building your credit, and this is pretty easy to do. So to 660, you're going you're gonna to sign up for a Discover, and that's going to take you straight up to the 700 scores. This can be done in 60 to 90 days. It can be done faster with an authorized user. If you don't have an authorized user, I do this for people all the way, 1000 bucks will get you a $20,000 limit on your credit, completely legal. Why? Somebody's going to put you on their credit card as an authorized user. A $20,000 limit with a zero balance can be worth to 200 points on your credit score. 200 points isn't going to get you your house, but what it will do is get you your debt payoff loan. They'll pay off all that debt. It'll get you up to a 660 to a 640, which is what you need to buy a house. Now you can wrap that new loan that you just took out into your mortgage if there's enough equity. And you just killed your payment. Now you don't have that payment. That's nuts. So you can get to a 700 score in 90 days just by applying for three separate credit cards and by taking out a debt payoff loan. 
This is important stuff. Okay. Any questions at all about medical debt before I move on? There's a lot more that I can go over, but I'm going to move on to vehicles. And rather than hold all the questions like I did last week, are there any questions that anybody wants to clarify about medical debt? Okay. Who in here likes to buy cars? Mike, I'm sorry, I have a question about Yeah. Medical. I heard that, um, and I should know this I'm in the field, but I, somebody just told me that medical debt as of January 2016 could not be part of a bankruptcy anymore. It's Which, tax. That's all I've got to say about that. When Congress, when, when the Supreme Court came out and said it was a tax, the question, I'm going to repeat the question. The question is, is that there's information coming out that your, uh, your medical bills are basically not going to be a tax write-off, right? And you're also not going to be able to charge it on bankruptcy. So if right now everybody has a free ticket, if you've got $80,000 in medical bills, number one reason for bankruptcy, so what did the government do? The government came in and said, no, it's not health care. It's a tax. They took away the number one reason for bankruptcy in the United States of America, and you didn't even know it. You didn't even know it. And I called it out on my radio station in 2011. I said, you've got to read this. You've got to understand what's going to happen. It's not even about your health. They are going to take away the number one reason for bankruptcy in the United States of America. Nobody knew it. And they're doing it. And that's why I said the repo men, oh, it's real. It's real. They may not take your body parts off. But you remember Roe? Debtor's prison? That's back too. There are people being thrown in jail every day for not paying their government debts right now. And they're being forced into payment plans. Something that is illegal in the United States of America, but it's happening. And it's going to get worse with the healthcare system. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? When I've used credit cards with zero interest, I've never gotten points for vacations or anything. If I charge something, I get the points for vacations and whatever the particular credit card is. But when I've done the zero percent, you know, two years with no interest, I don't get the points. Depends is on the there an card. a card that gives you points when you do zero? There is. Uh, Bank of America does it a lot. Okay. Now their terms are always different, and you got to understand when. And her question was: Is with a credit card? Um, <clears throat> do you get the points, the reward points? if you transfer over to zero percent. And for a lot of credit cards, the answer is no, until they need people to get credit cards. And that's why it's important, is there's all these things that you're supposed to keep up with. You can't possibly keep up with these things, but you can educate yourself on these things. And then you can seek out the people that at least know what you know, and a little bit more. And that's all this is about. I seek out professionals that have always made more money than me, that have always known more than me, and always contribute more to the community than I ever have. Why? Because that's what I aspire to be that next level. So does everybody else, whether you're a community service organizer or whether you're in the capitalistic world of business. One way or another, you're not going to stay the same as yesterday. It's not in our nature, no matter who you are. And that's why it's so important for us to understand what's going on and get mad about this. And that's going to bring me to my next point. Answer your question, we'll move on and we'll get to the to other questions when we're done, which is auto sales.